Hey, hello there, RJB here. It's been a while since I made a video because the recent events happening in Ukraine have kind of been eating up my time. I've been preoccupied with staying up to date, keeping track of what's happening, and haven't really been in the mu mood of casting any StarCraft since the news broke. But I felt like I needed a short break from that situation, so here I am. I'm gonna try and cast the start of a best of series between 458 and Beol on the name Dark Troll here on the bottom left of the map. 458 here on the top right of the map. Honestly, I am not entirely sure if I already casted this. I don't think I did. I don't think I've casted this. I, I'm feeling something in my bones that I might have done this one before. So let me check really quick if I did or didn't. And it looks like I didn't. One of the few downsides of casting a lot of fastest map games is that sometimes games start out looking the exact same. Because honestly, most games start out the exact same. So it just it was feeling the same as one of the older games I've cast in the past. You know, a Bjol here on the name Dog Troll starting off with the command center first, and we've got 458 starting off with what looks to be a gateway first into a Nexus. This is basically a small adaptation 458 felt forced to make over the past year to have a safer opening that still gets a pretty fast Nexus out on the map. In the past, on a corner spawn, most Protoses would just go for Nexus into Forge into gateway into choke but the adaptation kind of just has a gateway coming in there before the nexus so they're going to get a zealot out and protect their choke while they're trying to get their choke up and running from that very first marine that usually comes in to scout and maybe even stop and attack the choke and harass the protoss because i've seen players lose to that specifically and a player like Bjol and players like brain and hamburg sasu and minchel are very skilled at absolutely turning that early situation of finding the Protoss very early into the game before their cannons are finished warping in to use that situation to their advantage. They will come at you and they will keep coming at you and they will out micro you and they will out multitask you. They are just that good that such a small little window of opportunity will be used to the utmost of their advantage and even get them wins most of the time. Well, not most of the time, but quite often. Quite often, they will get a win out of that situation. So here we can see the Zealot protecting Choke. And the cannon there coming up in the front. It's a single cannon because 4 of 8 feels quite safe with the fact that Buell wasn't right next to him. If it was right next to him, probably double cannon but he's on the other side of the map, so a single cannon should do fine for now with some support from a Zealot. The one Zealot there coming across the map, gonna try to sneak into Beal's base to see what he's up to. If 458 can find that one command center there being added on already, they're in the back, he's gonna feel like he's got a pretty good shot at an early aggression build order instead of going for maybe a delayed build order. His aggression comes in a little bit later because Beal will have a smaller amount of Marines than if he went for a barrack before the command center. And that's almost something we might see right here, right now, with three Zealots are coming in across the map, ready for the attack, ready to snack on the Marines. Marines are pulling back though, and the Zealots, once again, once the Marines group up, feel forced to return back to the middle and maybe wait for more Zealots to come across the map. So one Cybercore there in the robotics support, robotics facility there in the front. Still of a dune there on the way in the back. Pylons on the side for barracks is being flown over the hill just in case. You got two gas there in the back and a cybercore finished there on the top corner. Getting a third gas already and there's robot number two. It looks to be a double reaver shuttle build order. Because otherwise we'd be seeing a Templar's archive already there or we'd simply be seeing more gateways. Support base should be coming in very soon. We've got an engineering bay there already on the way for Buell for detection and for level 1 attack upgrades. Timber upgrade is finished already and is getting range now as well. We've got only one cannon there finished up in the front, but we've got five zealots there. Buell is looking to break through one gateway there in front of the get cannons though. That is going to keep the marines at least a little bit away from breaking through. Two more cannons there warping in as well. The function of the gateway is basically to make it harder to attack the cannons behind the gateway. 
Although now he can solve the gateway. He believes he's got enough Zealous there on the scene to stop these Marines from breaking through. And I think he has enough indeed. He's trying to push back a little bit there. Finds the Marines. They're still in the front. So he has to pull back. Has to wait for the Reavers to finish before he can honestly start fighting against the army that Bill has so far built. And push across the map start hurting it. The two Star Wars are on the way for double Wraith production. Some players like to go for more barracks and just make Marines everywhere in their base and even across the map, all over the map. But Bill prefers going for double Wraith to start sniping shuttles, which is most easily done when the opponent is on the other side of the map because it takes such a long time for the shuttle to arrive. You have a lot of time to fly your rates across the map and take down the shuttle. So the Wraith option is honestly, in this scenario, definitely by far the best option. But it does take a lot of attention, awareness, and micro. He really has to be on top of his game. And I think Bill is probably the player who is one of the best at being on top of his game. He's very aware. He's not going to miss anything happening on the map. And his control is great as well. So the Shuttle there coming across the map. And I think there's only one Reaver in there, actually. I think he didn't... Oh, wait, there's two of them. I missed the second one being queued up. Got two shuttles there on the way back at home. Storm as well. Shuttle speed also on the way. And a Corsair will soon be added on as he's warping in a Stargate. So Bjol there very aggressively hunting down the Zealots there on the side. To deny 48 Division. Two Racer are on the bottom side, on the correct side. So he's going to see the shuttle flying in. And it's most likely going to go down to the Wraiths and... To the turret. So he flies in, Bill responds, Bill is on the chase, Reavers unload, one Reaver unloads. Gonna crawl forward, there's no Marines anywhere in the base. Well, there's on the side there, but too far away from this one. And he's just gonna use his tank and the race to kill it. No need risking losing Marines to a Reaver's Scarab Shop, but another drop comes in. Bill wasn't paying attention. Or evade there with a very quick follow-up. There's Templars inside. Templars are unloading. Templar misses Storm. Is there a second Templar? I don't see it yet. Tries to unload. Can't unload. Unloads the second Templar. Storms on the Marines there instead of on the SUVs. And he kills the Marines. Beautiful setup there from 458. I almost missed it myself. I just happened to be looking at the exact spot the follow-up shuttle was flying in from. It could have been very ugly. But Buell responded just in time. Kept his Marines. Nah, not his Marines. His SCVs alive. And out of harm's way. He's still behind an SCV in total though. In total, Forvade has more probes than Biel has SCVs. But Biel is going to catch up very soon. I believe. Because the raids are flying back and forth. Doing great recon. Great information gathering. Trying to cover as much ground as they can. But they're all flying away from the actual direction the shuttles are coming from. Although he's just flying back and forth. He's actually flying back and forth. Hunting for the shuttles. Tanks are being set up in pretty good split up locations. Not all together so they don't all die to a double storm or to a double scarab from a reaver. Keeping them a little bit split up. Comes in. Ron shuttle gets taken down. Shuttles are unloading. One shuttle there. Tries to get closer but it's too far. Oh he is actually just in range. Kills five. Kills five SCVs. Very good call there from Bjol to pull those SCVs off the minerals. I thought it was maybe too far away, but he can storm right here. Right on where those SCVs were mining the minerals. So a good call there from Bjol to play it safe, not risk it. And playing it safe, saved about 20 or 30 SCVs in total. So great call there. But 458 there, not relenting, not giving up on the pressure. Already flying across the map with another set of shuttles. Ray's returning home just in time though, but they might be on the wrong side of his base. He's going to fly in from the top side. He's expecting the shuttles to come from the bottom right side. So he's going to go in all the way. Marines are on the scene. He's trying to fly around there with the shuttles. shuttles all the shuttles die. He can't unload any single Templar, not a single Zealot. Great target firing there from Bill. Great precise clicking. Saves the economy once again. He's still growing. He's actually got more supply than 458 has at the moment. 458's drops haven't really done anything at all so far. Throws out the scan. Sees the shuttles there in the front. Gonna try to hunt them down. Splits up the race in fact. In the hopes that the shuttles will fly into the race there on either side. This is really smart gameplay. But considering... The shuttles are not yet arriving on the scene. He decides to split them up a little bit more. While cloaked, 
or if he doesn't know the shuttle, the rates are here. Though a couple of them are running out of rate energy. Got great coverage all over the map, but 458 is not going out yet. So he pulls back into the middle there. He pulls back into the middle as rate energy expires. And the trick he tried to pull doesn't quite succeed. 458 pulling rates to his sides. He's probably seen Bjol do something like we just saw before. He's probably pulled that trick before. And 458 is expecting it. He knows it is an opportunity or a possibility for Buell to pull off. Well, back at home here, Buell is getting big and pretty rich. Still only mining from triple gas, but he's got six, uh, 56 SCVs in total. It's a lot of money there coming into the bank. He has no worries at the moment whatsoever. This 4 of 8 is taking a lot of time. A lot of time being spent here by 4 5 8 before he pulls the trigger and goes for the attack. He's most likely trying to go for a drop on the choke and break through the front door. Bill there still hunting things down, finds a probe around the middle, finds two more probes most likely, 4 of 8 trying to build cannons all over the map, but that option for now gets denied. Bill is just flying back and forth and 4 of 8 is, buying, is giving Bill a lot of time to prepare himself for the eventual impact. It looks like he's gonna fly straight into the shuttles by pure coincidence. But there are Corsairs, and there's Observers, but Observers overshoot. Oh, the Corsairs absolutely obliterated the raids. But now we've got Valkyries here back at home. He doesn't mind losing the raids as long as he shuts down that drop. As long as he buys himself more time, because now the Valkyries are going to finish produ uh, producing. Like, there's already a lot of Valkyries there, and Valkyries are way easier to take shuttles down with than raids. Raids require more control, and with the Valkyries, you kind of just shoot on them and the entire group of shuttles dies. So the game is looking very, very good for Bio. There's 4 of 8 here still producing Corsairs. The Observers are still alive. Another wave of shuttles is finished. He's remaxing. Now adding on more gateways as well, getting all the upgrades for ground that he needs as well. He's got level 1 shield finished up because he's most likely planning on transitioning into carriers because he already has the fleet beacon and he's getting both air upgrades of armor and a weapon. He's most likely planning on going for carriers as a follow-up to his shuttle Corsair approach of dropping into the enemy base. Comes in from the bottom right, Valkyries are in a pretty good spot to respond, but he responds with the Marines first, starts unloading on top of everything. Is a Templar arriving on the scene? I don't see a single Templar there. Oh, the Templars might still be in there. Oh, he's using his... Oh, he got the storm off, he got the storm off. He actually kills almost everything there on the minerals. A couple of... One group of SCVs manages to escape. Went down for about 70 SCVs, down to 44. The trick drop there below the map. I'm sorry we couldn't see the Templars, but a trick drop of basically praying and hoping that Beol doesn't kill the shuttle with the Templars inside first. And then unloads at the very last possible moment. Templar storms, Templar hits. And that's a pretty hard hit there on Biel, but Biel almost maxed out. Now even throwing away Marines, and considering he's got 5 commands, which he should be on a very healthy SCV amount very, very soon. Or maybe he's going to stay on a low SCV amount and go for a bigger army. But 4 of 8 now breaking through the front door, which is actually going pretty well. He's breaking through, open up a hole there in the front, but tanks behind them. Run there are clearing out the zealots pretty easily. Another wave of units there coming though. Tried to place down the mines, but he doesn't have time to place the mines. Oh, there's level one attack there, but now we've got the drop there coming in from the top side. There. Oh, <laughs> he misflicks the storm. Okay, okay. So he gets in, and loads the Templar, gets a disruption web down on a tank or something below this right here. It's actually nothing below it. But he storms and misses the storm by clicking on the command center instead. A little bit unfortunate, but you never know. Maybe he didn't have enough time to click on the minerals. Maybe he had, maybe he didn't. But when you're there on the scene, you never know. Just an unfortunate misclick. A couple of mines there to be placed in the front by some vultures to kill at least a couple of units coming across the map, but a wave of zealous made it through before that. They're gonna try to arrive around the scene. Got Templars loading around the scene as well. Storming on the tanks. Pretty good storms, actually. Softens up a pretty good chunk of tanks. But because of the missed drop from earlier, Bill is now on 74 SCVs. He's healthy. He's got 
Um, not a lot of factories, but he's got a couple of factories. He should be pretty good with his production. He already is maxed out, so he doesn't need a lot of factories unless he starts losing tanks and vultures in the very near future. Then he definitely needs a whole lot more factories. The cannons in the middle are getting taken down. Got a drop coming from the bottom side. Getting intercepted. Splits up the shuttles though. Unloads all the shuttles. Beautiful job. Gonna walk close to the SCV. Storms the mineral patch. Kills 19. So it looks like Bjorn didn't have all of his SCVs off key. So he's back to 53. Loses almost two entire groups of SCVs there to the storm. Or Marzella's trying to get on top of the... Well, just letting them run loose. Just letting them run loose. So Bjorn once again gets hurt pretty badly there. Structures on the side that are providing invasion are getting pushed back into the base. A lot of drop they're already on the way on the bottom right. I'm gonna fly straight into the Valkyries though. That's pretty unfortunate. Manages to unload a couple of units. Manages to unload a Templar as well. But now there's mines on the bottom side there. Tries to storm into Valkyries, but the Valkyries are mine going back and forth so he misses the storm. Bill keeps his Valkyries alive and well and healthy. And now he's pushing into the middle. He's ignoring the cannons. He's running right past. I'm gonna place mines in the middle of the map. He doesn't care about the, the, the cannons. Hard to pronounce the word sometimes. He doesn't care about the cannons. Although now he's got some units here unloading on top of tanks. Pretty good choice, actually. Might even be able to... Ooh, tries to storm on the Valkyries, but the Valkyries are just flying back and forth. Great control there from Bjol. Is always impressive and very accurate control. Not a single click that is wasted. Well, let's clearing out some mines in the middle. Always works. Or they actually not going for carriers. I thought he was going for carriers, but he's feeling that he can't quite find himself enough time to make the switch. And the mines in the middle are pretty much killing all of the zealots he's trying to build. He really needs an observer there on the middle to spot out those mines. You also need some Dragoons there to kill the mines and the Vultures. Vultures are just kind of slowing down and interrupting his advancement. Oh, Bjol splits up. Bjol finds the shuttles. Finds the shuttles. The mines on the map really helping him out. The scans also really helping him out. Or they kind of notice it's too late, but at least the Corsair has managed to greatly deal damage to the Valkyries, but the Valkyries do win the fight in the end. But most of the Valkyries did go down, so that's going to make the follow-up drop way easier for Forfei to pull off. More Valkyries were under production, but the drop was already there on the way. Yet will the drop arrive before the Valkyries finish, or... What's going to happen? A couple of Valkyries are intercepting the wrong drop. This is going to... Oh, it doesn't kill it, though. That's gonna make... Oh, we already have Valkyries there already on the bottom side, prepared to intercept it. Storms on the Valkyries, though. Valkyries take a lot of damage there. It looks like Gil was just in time. Pretty smart to just place whatever Valkyries he had there on the spot. Same here. He just puts the Valkyries on the dropping paths that are most likely to be taken. And doesn't really have to focus on anything at all. The Gil there staying alive and fortifies pressure from the cross-map situation is not really working out. Cross-map is just very difficult to play against these very high-level players. If you're a little bit closer to them, it becomes a little bit easier to start hitting your stuff. But when you're this far away, it's just so difficult because you have to cover so much terrain that you usually kind of end up not hitting anything because the opponent, the Terran, knows it's coming. The Terran has a lot of time to prepare and react. Great storms, though. Trying to kill as much as he can, but not quite achieving the amount of kills he wants to have. He's producing as fast as he can, but honestly, he doesn't have enough structures. The classic 458 weakness of not having enough production structures. It's the classic thing I always see happening with 458. He's always non stop attacking, and his non stop attacking usually tends to work. But the times I see him lose games, it is usually because. He doesn't have extra bases, not enough production. It takes him a little while to max out. He's fast though, he's fast maxing out, and the drops are consistent and very rapid. Ooh, I see three Templars on the scene. One storm, two storm, kills four, kills 30. Does he have more storms? 
Zealots are still on the scene. Zealots killed all of the Marines, so now there's actually no protection in the back. So an Archon there on the way, Zealots are running back and forth, creating havoc, killing everything they can. Archon finishes up. The Archon starts attacking the Valkyries, not the SUVs though. Both just coming to the backside trying to clear out the Zealots that were still there. Archon is wreaking havoc. Archon is being an absolute pain in the butt. And now Bilbo's in a pretty bad situation because the units on the middle got cleared out as well. So there's a couple of units here back at home though, but we got a wave of Zealots coming in with maxed out upgrades. Bjol's tanks are also maxed out on upgrades though, but they're coming in and they're going to kill stuff and Bjol doesn't exactly want to start losing units at this point in time. SV there across the map that dodged the storm and Bill forgot to send them back home, so now they're just running across the map, but they do spot out the drop though, they do spot out the shuttles that are coming in. And actually, they do serve their purpose. They do serve their purpose. The Zealots are running to the bottom side there because they are trying to get into the shuttles themselves. 458 saw the Valkyries coming, so he pulls the shuttles away. He's actually going to fly into another Marine, while here in the front we got a fight breaking out because Zealots are still running across the map, but the mines are buying enough time for Bill to kind of stay safe and sound. Or Vade there saw the Marine, so he pulls his uh, shuttles even further back home, sends the Corsairs into attack the Valkyries, splits up, Valk splits up the Corsairs. We can still use two Corsairs to send the drop into the base. I really like this detailed play. This is very smart stuff for both players, very reactionary, but also very proactive. The tanks are now rolling across the map. Bjol feels that he's rich enough and big enough to have enough SCVs to start pulling off an attack against 458. And the drop there comes in from the bottom side. Valkyrie's ready to intercept, starts loading the... Ooh, the Valkyries took everything down really quickly. Now the game is getting into pretty dangerous territory. 4, 4, 5, 8 with tanks knocking on his front door. He does have a small army there, but he's pretty much out supplied at the moment. He's in 148 supply against 190. That bus on the high ground though killed most of the tanks. Most of the tanks lose most of their HP. Templar storms against tanks are just so damn good. But more reinforcements are on the way, and 4 of 8 is low on supply, he doesn't have enough production to max out instantly. That's 6 gateways there, another 7 right there, another 5. Leads us to 12 plus 1 plus 5. He's done 18 gateways, not a lot of gateways. He's got 4. He's building Corsairs, not... I was actually defending because he's so quick with sending his units in and using them and pulling off really well executed defensive maneuvers. He's actually pushing back Bjol out of his pathway, out of his choke, and at least for now secures his own base. But he's gonna need more production, or at least he's gonna have to pull off some amazing attacks across the map. He's gonna fly into some mines there. The mines on the side keep spotting out those shuttles and of course 458 doesn't know they're there those mines have been very useful for Biel. does Biel still have valkyries yes he has valkyries and he's maxed out both players are in fact maxed out so an attack they're coming across the map mines being put there on the middle to buy some time and the drop they're coming in for the top side do the valkyries respond the valkyries respond just on time they start to load as mines are on the scene though all the shuttles have gone down Valkyries are just too damn strong and too damn good at their job. This is why you build Valkyries. It's just so easy to take down shuttle drops and not even have to storm dodge. You just click with your Valkyries on a shuttle and everything dies quicker and you can blink. Just so damn fast. So damn fast. Valkyrie are even on the scene in the front, ready to beat annoying. Made some reverse, but he needs some shuttles as well, and they got a tank army rolling across the map to start wreaking havoc, to start ending the game. Actually, there's a lot of zealots that are coming across the map. Two mines are in the front, gonna buy some time, might even clear out a couple of them zealots. Pretty good mine hits, actually. The mines doing a lot of work there, and now Templar's trying to come in and storm. Holy target fires on the second Templar, so only one storm hits. Or right now, 165 supply. His small base size really coming back to hurt him. Should he have switched into carriers at some point? Did he ever even have time pushing the carriers? Because carriers take so damn long to produce that Bill would have basically just pushed forward even if he wanted to get carriers. 
he is forced to stay on gateway units. And the gateway units here are doing a pretty good job there with the load there on the tanks. The Zealot Bomb working out quite well, but not well enough. Unload some Reavers, get some shots off, picks the back up. Great micro there on this play from 458. Gonna try to win this with some Reaver micro. Ooh, the Zealot's also doing a great job. He's pushing Bill back, but Bill is actually microing back. He's microing back, preserving his tank count. And 48 once again survives yet another attempt at killing 458. Great, great control there. Great patience from Bjol. He's once again maxed out, continuously producing from all of his factories, and once again moves out for another attack across the map. And that's a. Ooh, the Reavers on the low ground. One goes down, picks one up, still on the chase, gonna load right next to them, gonna try to get a shot up on the Scarab, does explode, kills one. Zealots are on a chase there as well, the Micro, the Reaver Micro is so great there. From 4 to 8, he's really getting a lot of use out of the one Reaver with the Scarab, kills a lot, but not enough. So now more Zealots are coming out from the base, ready to strike on these tanks, tanks are heating up, so the Zealots are gonna be softened up before they arrive, but they do get on top of the frontal tanks there, but not all of the tanks are sieged up. I really like this detail there, the Four fight that Buell is not teaching up all of his tanks, he's keeping a group of tanks unseized, ready to kill whatever the other tanks have already hit with their tank shots. Scans coming out, Buell is chasing down the shuttles, he saw them fly over the mine, the mines there are still helping him out greatly. Four of eight shuttle with a lot of units inside, all die, that's about 50 supply dead and gone, supply that he really needed to Kill these tanks on the middle here, with which he now has to kind of just rebuild. He cannot deal with these tanks on the middle. Bill is just playing an honestly amazing and very patient game with really expert control. It's just expert control. Great focus on hunting down the shuttles. With a little bit of help from three mines that just never exploded during the entire game. Those three mines have saved Bill's life time and time and time again just by the act of existing on that exact spot right there. Those mines are actually insanely well placed. And yeah, 4th of 8 just can't break free. Of course, yes, they're on the scene killing the Valkyries though, but we've got tanks, vultures, a lot of unseached tanks. I like that he's not sieging them up. We can still micro them. Templars arrive and they're on the scene though, storming a couple of them tanks but not killing them. Well, kills one, kills two. But more tanks coming from back home. All the Valkyries have been killed, it looks like. Yo, doesn't feel the need for Valkyries anymore, he's making raids instead. Valkyries can go screw themselves. It's time for tanks, time for vultures, time for raids. Now, loads of Reavers are in the front, gonna try to get some shots off. Doesn't get good shots off, gets actually does get good shots off. But those scarabs are going straight for uh, the Goliaths in the front, but they hit the tanks in the back. Fourth of eight there with a very small gateway count, unable to keep up with Bjol's production, unable to keep up with this army of tanks. The army of tanks is just too damn strong for this very small gateway army. Fourth of eight try to just play at a very high attacking game pace. But it came at the cost of being unable to build a proper big base. It came at the cost of being unable to transition into carriers when he most needed carriers and arbiters. He just couldn't split up his actions well enough. Because honestly, when you're playing this very high intense non-stop attacking game style that 458 has, you can't build at the same time. You cannot build at the same time. You want to attack that frequently, that fast, that often. And if Terran defends successfully, like build it right here, you really do win these Terran against Protoss, not easily, but quite convincingly. 458 never got his boots off the ground. Most drops got intercepted. Most drops got shut down. That's game number one from this set. I hope you enjoyed it. There's going to be a couple more games from this set coming up sometime this week when I have more time to open up for more casts when I'm less occupied by, honestly, much more important things going on in the world right now. Some things just take priority 
over making videos. No matter how much I like making videos, or how much you like them, there are some things that I will always prioritize over basically game and hobby. Thanks for watching and hope to see you return next time around here at RJB TV along with me, RGB, to enjoy and watch some replays together with me. Have a good day and stay safe.